Hello, and welcome to the Audio Kitchen. Here we're going to look at two recipes of some common complex waves that you'll find on synthesizers and such, and how to create them with sine waves. The first recipe is for the sawtooth wave. You start with the fundamental frequency at full strength, then go to the second partial at half strength, the third partial at one third strength, and so on. Ideally, this would go to infinity, but we don't have to go for that long. The sawtooth wave has the fundamental, or the first partial, at full strength. So let's generate a tone, and let's use an, let's use an even number so that it's easier to deal with. Here, let's do 100 hertz frequency, and let's start with 0.2 to give us plenty of headroom so that we don't run into the top and bottom of the waveform. All right, so there's 100 at 0.2. So now let's generate another tone. This is going to be the second partial, so we're going to multiply the beginning frequency by 2, that makes it 200, and we're going to divide the amplitude by 2 is 0.1. Now let's make another partial, 300 at 0 0.0667, the fourth partial, which will be 400 at 0 0.05, is 500 at 0 0.04, the sixth partial, which is going to be 0.2 divided by 6, or 0 0.0333, be 700 hertz, at 0.2 divided by 7. The eighth partial, which is going to be 0 0.025, I can at least do that one in my head. 900, and this will be 0.2 divided by 9, or 0, oh, I should have known that one, 0 0.0222. Let's go up to the 10th partial for now, and, and then take a look at what the wave looks like. And this will, of course, be 0 0.02. Now we've got 10 tracks, each of which is a sine wave at a frequency that's a multiple of 100 and at an amplitude where as it goes higher in frequency, it goes lower in amplitude. Let's take a listen. That sounds like one tone. It doesn't sound like a bunch of waves together. Let's view what this looks like when you mix them into one. It's beginning to look more and more like a sawtooth waveform. Now, just like on all the other cooking shows, I've previously prepared a fully cooked sawtooth waveform. As you can hear, this sounds much brighter because it has all of the higher partials in it. Let's look at these waves on a spectrum analyzer and on a live oscilloscope. This is the sawtooth wave that we generated by hand using 10 sine waves. And as you can see, it looks more or less like a sawtooth wave. But here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those are the 10 partials that we did. Here's the full sawtooth waveform with all the partials present. And as you can see, that's a much more complete, jagged sawtooth wave. And you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 all the partials that will fit on the, on the spectrogram. In fact, the spectrum analyzer runs out of resolution. It can't accurately show every single partial as it gets higher and higher in frequency. The other recipe is for a square wave. You start with the fundamental at full strength. You go to the third partial at one third strength, skipping the second, fifth partial at one fifth, seventh at one seventh, ninth at one ninth, and so on. Fundamental at full strength. Skip the second partial, go to the third partial at third strength. Skip the fourth, go to the fifth partial at one fifth strength. Skip the sixth partial, seventh partial at one seventh strength. Skip the eighth partial, go to the ninth partial at one ninth strength, and so on. You end up with this. If we mix these first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth partials together, we get this shape, which is beginning to approach the look of a square wave. And here's the completed square wave with all partials. And here's the square wave on the spectrum analyzer and the oscilloscope. This is just the first 10 partials. Well, actually, there's only one, two, three, four, five partials because we skipped the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth according to the recipe. If you see a completed square wave, it looks like this. And here you have, once again, partials going off to infinity getting lower and lower in amplitude as they go higher in frequency. And there's your square wave. One last interesting little thing. When you send a wave through something that distorts it, 
like if you overdrive an input or some other stage in a piece of audio equipment, you will end up making the wave more like a square wave. Right now you'll see this is a perfect sine wave. The spectrum analyzer shows that it's just the one partial at 100 hertz. But as we increase the level so that it starts to distort, you'll see the wave wants to go up here in a, in a shape like that, but it can't because it's running into the limit. The distortion itself adds more partials. On some things like an electric guitar, it can sound good, but on most audio sources, it doesn't sound good, and so you want to avoid that kind of distortion.